CNN ain't see none of my friends Swag gave me the blues They never walked in my shoes They want us living in fear They what I'm trying to hear Switched it over to Fox Kept clicking, I barely stopped New guests on NBC No one that represent me So I got tired of waiting Sitting master debate Give me some headlines It must be past bedtime Sleeping on me still Like I ain't vitamin D for real Rep your city Play devil's advocate Ain't ready, gon' have to smack a bit Tell me something good A recipe for success Give me some timeline Shop session and flight deck Hey, P, what's next? Bring the band out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's your nigga CLD the Cater Boy Music coming to you live somewhere in the eight o'clock hour on a Monday afternoon. Yeah, you know I'm saying. And just like you don't ever catch that boy peeing without teller. You don't catch peanut butter without jelly unless you a square. You feel what I'm saying? You don't catch yogi without boo boo. You don't catch the boy Sid Free without Roy. Yeah, you know I'm saying. Your boy from A Town by way of D Decatur. And it wouldn't be a part if I ain't bring my nigga P. Elevator. Yeah, you know I mean. Damn, you know the down south jam. Ain't number good. It's your boy P. Henry Trot, you know aka Home Run Trot, aka Casino P, aka Sweet P, aka Mr. Long P, all by itself. I'm with my best body, my Decatur by my East Side Six nigga. Shout out, man. How we feeling tonight, man? What we on? Yeah, yeah I already know what we on man this is give me some headlines and we welcoming y'all to what episode is it bro you remember oh yeah man <coughs> it's s o one e o five one two three four y'all already know it hey man the episode five so you already know we kicking it all the same way we always do on the flight deck a little bit of that guy this week's flight deck is brought to you by an empty pack and a little bit of that Gentleman Jack, we're gonna be on that guy all night because about halfway through, we're gonna get real, man. And uh, yeah, oh, I ain't gonna say I need a little bit of liquid courage, but let's just say I'm gonna be speaking the T R O O F come hour two. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> <coughs> speaking of hour two, I'm gonna do something we don't ever do and start a clock. <laughs> 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 Shouts out to my memory. We keeping we keeping track of time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do something I don't usually do. What you do, bro? I ate that thing, man. <gasps> you don't remember that, dude? You don't remember what it's doing? <laughs> it don't, man. But can I go on a quick soliloquy, man? On on this flight that chop session, man, yeah. bro. Bro, I grew up when the bar, uh, I don't even remember the whole bar, but Juvie said something along the lines like, son, little mama, but I ain't tripping. I know I got some big lips, but I ain't licking it. Like, I remember so many rap bars about not eating pussy in the 90s. So many bars about not eating pussy. It is ridiculous. I remember being in middle school, and the first time my partner told me about eating pussy, I thought he was an alien. We was like 11. This nigga started early. That's neither here nor there. <laughs> but we sit at lunch, and they're like, we having them real, like, big mouth type conversations. I'm looking Brad dead in the face, and I ain't gonna say a name, but I don't even know if he know he the first nigga to talk to me about eating pussy and kind of hit me to what was going on, but we gonna call him EGQB. Shouts out to my squad. But anyway, then he talk about some, yeah, man, that shit just feel like the inside of your mouth. Whoop, shoot. And like he told me so much shit that sounded crazy at the time, but he ain't lie fucking once, bro. Said all that to say, 
oh my God, do I feel like I am a dinosaur because I promise you to be the rapper talking about not eating ass in 2021. How am I the only nigga that don't eat ass? How am I the only nigga that don't eat ass? People talk about groceries. It's so common. We gonna call it groceries. I grew up when not eating pussy was apropos. And eating ass is groceries before I'm 35? Yeah, damn. Life come at you fast. Young Dave thought he wouldn't have to eat pussy. <laughs> Little did he know, they gonna want you to go around eat the back door. God damn. <laughs> and I ain't even drunk yet. This sober thoughts. It been on my mind, cuz. <laughs> Not to cut it you on off. my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Not to cut you off. <laughs> but talking about uh, how you was legit and eating pussy was foreign to you, it was also foreign to me. The first time I ever had a conversation, it was a guy, his, his initials are J.H., we was outside the boys and girls club sitting out for his, that, that swing set that's out there. Maybe still be out there today. And I remember having this conversation, hearing about it for the first time. And he was in high school. I was in, I think I was sixth grade and he was like in ninth or 10th grade and he was already on it. And he was in high school. Like he was in high school. He's like, oh man, yeah, it's, you know, it's a little salty, but you know, it, and I was like, oh, I don't just eat salt. So <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> eat pussy in high school. Ain't no running home to take a shower right before you eat that pussy. That's why it was salty because she was sitting on that thing all day. All day. <laughs> you know, you in high school, you got to oh, do, no. do it when you got time. And when you got time, <laughs> hey, I'm going to tune in there now. You going to answer that dope? <laughs> we got the salt block. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I said not to cut you off, man. Raising children. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> speaking of, <laughs> speaking of making babies, um, <laughs> man, I'm about to give you some. Uh, we gonna jump this show off, leading out of that flight deck, um, and into not not cutting you off, but cutting you off at the same time. Um, I want to uh, please do, please do. I want to give you some timeline, man. Um, Earlier this week, you had an exchange um, that was prompted by a young lady's, it was a TikTok that was turned into a tweet. And the tweet stated that people think raising boys is an easier task. And the young lady, I think her point was that raising boys is easier because parents are lazier when it comes to their boys and they allow the young woman um, that they end up being with, if they end up being um, heterosexual, um, they allow that young woman like to fill the gaps that weren't. If I could interject, yeah. her hypothesis and the structure of her TikTok was the act the colloquialism or the belief that raising boys is easier is false and is built on the premise that you all neglect to teach them core values that the women they end up with have to deal with and create balance for that imbalance that you leave as a half-assed parent. Okay. So it was, it was, I, I interpreted it as, and my response was generated by the belief that hypothesis was just, it was mired in what I like to call toxic femininity, which I'm really trying to get off the ground because the notion that there is a form of toxic masculinity that exists, but in a world of yin yang, positive, neg positive, negative electrical current, sun, moon, there is balance and equal energy in absolutely everything you see on this planet. And to believe that there isn't a version of femininity or feminism that is toxic is scientifically and logically impossible. Hmm. And when you get to the point to where 
the desire to be equal, it eradicates your view of balance. You stop fighting for equal and you just dominate, 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 dominate. And similar to a previous comment or sentiment or I guess emotion, because that's what drives a lot of human interaction that I expressed on a previous cast we had. And some, as someone who exists in a minority community, as a melanated person, as a black person in America, I always seek to be an ally to absolutely any other minority community, whether it's your sexuality, whether it's gender fluidity, whether it's dealing with issues of being feeling like you were born in the wrong body, whatever community you feel yourself to identify with and you deal with oppression as a result of it, I identify with you. And I talk to you about being an ally and being ready to fight with anybody who's fighting a righteous cause. But I am never one who can find balance at the point where people I fight with to find the balance they seek, to find the equality they're trying to reach just like we are as a community, I I find a great deal of difficulty in just sitting by when they attack me, something I identify as in the process of fighting for their equality. When their path to equality is attacking, I don't understand why you are no longer an ally if you do not just simply sit by silent. If you have any dissenting opinion or question or point out fallacy in an argument, they attack you. And I refuse to just parrot back whatever you say if that's what it takes to be an ally. I don't identify with that and I never will. And that's that's the, and I'm sorry to go on that whole diatribe. The point was to drive what I interpreted as. And her hypothesis was that raising boys is not easier. There's a great deal of neglect that goes into raising boys that leads to toxic men, that women who are more difficult to raise, who were raised properly, end up having to deal with. And Attaching blanket identity to any community is toxic. And that's why I called it toxic femininity or toxic feminism, because in an effort to make a very valid point about something, I'm sure, and I could sit back and shut the hell up and respect her telling me personal stories about having dealt with this imbalance. When I look at the list of things in that tweet, I can look in the mirror and see those flaws in myself and things I had to grow out of as a man. I know women I dated who would say, you sit down and shut the hell up because you were that man with me. You see what I'm saying? So I'm not sitting here and saying, you ain't talking about me. Oh, you're talking about me with some of the things on the list. But it ain't about a hit dog hollering. That's why that tweet said, my response said, y'all remember when both genders had flaws? You feel what I'm saying? Like, that was the first part of the tweet. Because, man, it suck. If this is about who's harder to raise, we're talking about parenting. We're talking about turning little people into big people. That's some cool shit. Man, it would be cool if that TikTok had some, like, love driving it. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if it was... Boys aren't easier to raise. They need just as much watering, love, and growth as we pour into our girls. And when they don't get it, it leads to these deficiencies. It's all in how you serve it. Maybe it should have been a shit sandwich. Boom, shit, boom. But it was just shit to me. You feel what I'm saying? And I don't like sitting by getting attacked when I feel a part of a community because I seek to be an ally to a minority community or a disenfranchised community. Because women outnumber us. They're not a minority community. They've just been oppressed. You feel what I'm saying? So I say minority, but I really mean disenfranchised community, whether the reason be through structure and policy or cultural imbalance. You feel what I'm saying? So it's, for me, like I know the same thing she was saying about men and what they lack in upbringing, I think the same thing can be said for women in some cases as well. Uh, with like, the, and it's all about. I attribute a great number 
of the world's issues, the world's problems to poor parenting. Like damn near everything is because of poor parenting. And the systems that, like me and the lady, we get to see how different groups of friends from different socioeconomic, from different backgrounds, like all these different um, levels of access, how they're raising their children. And we see the, you get to see that rearing up close because that's how you build the way you rear. It's like, all right, well, I was reared this way. And some of the things I, I don't agree with how I was reared. And so you look at how people are rearing their children and you you gather that information, like it becomes a larger and larger sample size as you see it done more and you're more observant of, of how it goes. And so I know in your point, one of the points you made was it is more difficult to raise young ladies because raising young ladies, like there's so many more things that women have to deal with. So it is a loftier task in raising a young woman because we don't like we don't have to go through the menstruation cycle that it's not something we have to deal with like we don't have to like we aren't dodging um on the scale that they are like i'm not saying that sexual assault doesn't happen uh from women doing it to men but by large in part men are the aggressors when it comes so having to teach and that's oppression in itself like having to teach being an oppressed subgroup of people, you have to be taught ways of navigating the world differently because you are have to be aware of your oppressor. A big thing I wanted to drive home is when I talked about boys being easier to raise, it's 140 characters, so there is no go point by point, example by example. But the one thing as a society I feel like we don't look at it all is something <laughs> predatory behavior is not exclusive to rape. Mm. Being a person who is seeking to violate others is a trait that is not exclusive to men. Let's uh, agree. Other than murder, there is no more heinous act. That's why both carry the death penalty. And I will never try to put anything on the scale with rape. As a human being, I will never treat knowing that someone in my family has dealt with something like I treat knowing someone in my family dealt with that. And we both have had to the conversation of the role I play in my family when that information comes. You understand what the fuck I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't play about that shit at all. And I respect its motherfucking impact. Be clear. But predatory behavior and being a shit human being is not exclusive to men. And there are countless things men have to worry about that women never have to worry about either. Men are much less likely to have to worry about rape and women are much less likely to ever have to worry about unknowingly raising a child that isn't theirs. It takes a shitty human being to do that to a person. And that's something that is done to a human being over 18 years through the child support cycle or through a whole fucking lifetime. If they ever tell you or you ever find out. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. I got partners who got tricked into signing the birth certificate had the test later on and still had to pay child support until the child was 18 because they signed that birth certificate. Yeah. So it's a dirty game out here. And being a shit human being is not exclusive to males. And the burden of raising a quality human being should not be something that we nitpick at each other because of our flaws over. When it could be something birthed out of love and a light conversation where you actually address basic things like when both hit puberty, the boy's embarrassing moment might be his voice changing in the middle of class. And he goes from talking deep in class. A young woman's embarrassing puberty moment 
may be getting her first period while wearing an unflattering color. Right. That's a much that's a much different day to deal with when they get home. They mature faster than us. So a lot of that shit hit them at a younger age. Yeah. And then they got to go deal with people every single day who still immature as fuck us. So you literally don't have to deal with boys hitting puberty as soon as you have to deal with your daughters growing up. You feel what I'm saying? It's so many elements to boys being easier to raise. And the most interesting part of this shit is we exist in a country, this colloquialism arise where there's been a fucking plague of single parent house homes, most of which are women. So who formed this motherfucking opinion that we all have, that we talk about and circle around? Y'all form this opinion and you're going to sit around and attack us for this shit existing? Single mothers had to be the ones to form this boys are easier to raise opinion. And it had to have been birthed from the difficulties they had raising their fucking daughters. Men ain't sitting around talking about how difficult it is to raise their little princess. Most niggas I know with daughters call them their little princess. You feel what I'm saying? And then they son, they little clone. They mo- they did it. Yeah, that my love. Everything he do, it's like his shit don't stink to him. It really flat out seemed like it's much easier putting his princess on a pedestal and doing everything it takes to protect his princess than it is for my brother to raise his son. When his son do something fucked up, man, I remember I used to do that same shit. It took me doing, it took this happening to me for me to learn that. It's it's like it's already something ingrained in him on how he going to teach him that lesson. Yeah. This is something I have to talk to him about. This is something I was taught to, I was taught to, and I was taught to about, and I had to hit my motherfucking head on the wall to learn that lesson. It's like it's reflex for him to talk to his son and teach his son life lessons. But his daughter, he be talking to me about shit, and I be like, nigga, I don't know. But we can brainstorm. I, I mean, I ba- I play devil's advocate to give you another side of issues you're dealing with so you can see it from her perspective and go in understanding instead of trying to lead because at some point you got to come out the reins. But it'd be like, nigga, I don't, I don't fucking know. You don't know, nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we're like... You're in this position. <laughs> he be talking to me about shit dealing with his son and he just be... He talked to me about shit with his daughter. And he'd be like, "I'd be like, man, sit up straight, man. It' gonna work out. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Like, you just gotta know that having shit work out the way you want it to is not success. Her being happy and you being a resource to whatever it is she's trying to build is all the fuck you could do. You feel what I'm saying? Right. And like that control over. You know, when people invest, whether it be time, money, whatever the resource, they want it to yield a return. And nah, nigga, this is just an unrelenting, everlasting investment, period. And you got to love the act of investing. It ain't about the return. Mm -hmm. The investing is the return. Right. Once you plant that seed, it's your job to water that motherfucker and make the environment as healthy for it as possible right. until you no longer have the ability to affect it. Period. And that's that's the perspective I come from whenever I play devil's advocate or just play an open ear because I don't ever try to give advice because don't do what I would do. Do what you would do. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. All I can do is give you a perspective. But do what you would do. Don't ever do what I would do. I live with my choices. I don't want you to live with my choices. <laughs> Is uh, but like that's what was so difficult about it because the immediate responses to me had absolutely nothing to do with parent, not a goddamn thing. It was all and who makes it harder for women? Men, we do. So who's harder to raise? That's the you feel what I'm saying? We do. But that's the the thing, right? Is when I saw that, it was 
man, this is a really good opportunity to open up a dialogue about this. Like this is a really good opportunity to open up a dialogue about parenting and like maybe, and I, I just feel like it's, it's that human nature of, especially in the Facebooks and the Twitters of the world is it's very argumentative and it's not a debate and not even a debate to see who's right, a debate to like find solutions. And we miss a whole lot of opportunities when it comes, when we have a, when we have those opportunities, we miss it a whole lot. And it's kind of like the thing we talked about last night is Captain 2020. You know what I mean? You feel me? And we'll get into that later on. I don't it's that it's little elements of that shit. Can I give you a few elements of yeah. And I edit this out and put a song over it. Yeah. Bruh. I'm going to go ahead and say the actual name because I'm going to dead the audio, like dead ass edit this out, bro. <laughs> Johnny Giuliano. This the one or it ain't the one. That simple. Bounce, 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 bounce. Now slide, 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 slide. Fly off, then freaking fly mileage. Just bought a villa on Gullah Gullah Island. Chill with Benya Benya getting high in the ceiling. I supply the women, so heat went and bought the liquor. Now we jig, jig, jigging on the dance. Flow, what's the economics of it? Talking cash. Flow, hoes all over. Told you my mentor, you playing in the two, three. Caught in the friend zone, walking in the clouds with the great Dr. King. He handed me a blunt, step for you, not me. Got white folks to listen, think I can't get weed. Now I'm thinking only get our people to believe. Bounce that ass like you mean that shit. Work that dick. Like you seen that flip Whole ass smoke like you need that here Whole lot of green with a mean that will Bad yellow bitch with an ad like whoa Never say stop, she just tell me when to go I ain't got a teacher cause she already know Hall of Fame pro slow mo with the throat like Bounce, 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 bounce Now slide, 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 slide Slide through the city with 20% tent Pray all sucker niggas give up hating for Lent But <laughs> maybe I'm asking too much Stick shift in the clutch while I'm asking two blunts Sipping on the strong while it's wrapped in two cups Fucking two bitches like I'm wrapped in two guts Find a better nigga, tell the bitch good luck Sweaty hoe be flexing like I'ma give a fuck Now I <laughs> just gotta find my way home But when I step outside the house I swear a nigga heard his song So I'm back and he'll get me Getting it, moonwalk high with all is my witness. Sausage, egg, cheese, gravy, and biscuits. Cocaine, weed, syrup, condoms, and bitches. At a white girl house, feeling like Clinton. Digging in the back, cause a nigga on a mission. Standing up in it, feel like the room spinning. Charlie Sheen victory, lap winning. Bounce, 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 bounce. Now slide, 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 slide. He talked about not to cut you off. You think you can take t- talk to the people for a second while I run out? Yeah, I can definitely talk to the people. Bad, bad. Yeah, man. So, talking to my dog about rearing children and parenting parenting rearing children is the same thing but being a parent and then being a child and being having to be raised gives you um just a (laughs) being raised gives you an example of what it's like to raise children and loving your parents or understanding what your parents were trying to do. Because I know my parents didn't always get it right, but I knew that what my parents were and what they sought after was doing things that created a human that was that worked well with other people, um, somebody who was confident in himself, somebody that loved his family. Like they raised me with really, really good values. They just didn't always get that shit right. And so if you're a parent out here and you're going through 
the process of raising a little human man. I know, I don't know from pers- personally about your your journey, but I wish you guys speed because it's not easy. It's not easy. Nobody will ever say that parenting is easy, even though people on the internet might say, oh man, people think parenting is easy. Like we, we, we know it's not easy, the us folks who don't have children because we are not the ones who are doing it, us who don't have children. And I think a lot of times that is- That's the exact reason we don't have babies. Right, right. Not to cut you off, but it not being easy is the reason we don't have babies. Having to help raise your babies is the reason we say, yeah, no babies for me for a while. (laughs) I'm running up on 35 and I'm still without child. Uh, And it's, it's on purpose. <laughs> I done done my fair share. Pull out game too strong. Man, I done done my fair share. Pull out game too strong. He's playing B. They say pull up. We say pull out. <laughs> um, But. Skirt, skirt. You know what song I'm talking about? That swift. Uh-uh. You I know ain't... my game like the bottom of the deck wet. You heard that shit? Uh-uh. Yeah, it's on one of my hidden playlists. I I uh send you the Spotify link. Square business. Um, so a segue. Making 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 babies. <laughs> That's a major life decision, man. Speaking of making this, are you? <laughs> Speaking of mistakes. Uh, that way I thought you was going. No, nah, I wouldn't go. Uh, I have a friend from my, I'll say I met him. He's a friend from my past. We still, we still dogs. Um, we call kids fuck trophies. And that's still one of the funniest terms I've ever heard in my entire life. Um, but speaking of life decisions. Speaking of fuck trophies, did you catch your boy Daniel Kalua Oscar speech last night? I didn't. Bruh, this nigga literally started off so artful, so deep, talking about Fred Hampton, talking about the Black Panthers. And the last 30 seconds, he just lose it. He's like, but tonight we're going up. Yep. Start talking British and shit, right? And then uh, he look at his mom and say, my mom and my dad had sex, yo, and now I'm here, man. Celebrate life tonight, y'all. And his mama lean up and you can see her audibly, like you can see her go. And then look at his sister and you can hear like that. You can hear the, yeah, you know that noise. I can't make the noise, but you know the noise they make after they mad. Bro, you could hear him, you, you could feel his mama searing because now people know she had sex. <laughs> 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 you do not play with no good day. It's a hey, you did not play that with no later. <laughs> That's Bruh, you did not put her business in the street like that. Don't nobody need to know she has sex. You here. That's all they need to know. Right. <laughs> she she was not here for that foolishness, bro. Yeah. Major life decision doing that. He Uh-oh. thanked the first. She was like, why he circled back around to me? I was good. You know what I'm saying? Why he circled back around? <laughs> it's because he was done talking, but they hadn't played no music. He looked at his mama and said, fuck it. Turn up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh, if you cut the speech at like 122, smooth. But 215, just enough to, you know... You know, the, uh, it's better to remain silent and be thought of food than open your mouth and remove all doubt. Yeah, man. The pregame got on his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Daniel Kaluuya. Is it Kaluuya? Holla Kaluuya? Oh, yeah. I ain't never seen it written down. I just be saying that shit. So it could be Kabuya for all I know. Got that. I, I just know he knows. And then I saw that that why at the end, and I just can't not pronounce it now. <laughs> hey, I feel like they doing a slick British invasion, and instead of giving any other black roles, the black guys, they're giving them the British black guys. You know what I mean? Like he is what Derek Luke would have been. Like, had this nigga been around 
15 years ago, he'd have been Antoine Fisher. You feel like the nigga played a Black Panther. It wasn't no American where Anthony Mackey was. I ain't even trying to be that guy, but, you know, it's love. It's love. Cause I, he crushed that shit. I like that nigga. He, cr- I get he crushed it. it. I get it. Yeah. But yeah, I seen some where uh, I couldn't have a real dope fast sketch that. comedy show on HBO Max. You seen this all woman sketch comedy show on HBO Max? His? Nah, nigga, it's an all woman sketch comedy show. Why would he be on it? Oh I, no, I, was, I thought he wrote some shit, bro. It's one of these skits, bro. That shit's so funny. They be sitting there like brunch or some shit, just talking, and the girl lean up and say, "I'm just saying." Black Widow should have been played by either a black woman or a spider. And then that shit just cut. I <laughs> <laughs> said a spider. That's good shit. She went and got a British dude to play the Black Panthers. That shit crazy. Where was, where was Michael B. Jordan? I hate to be a dick, but... We just talking. That's all. Awesome. You know, the conversation on wax. The conversation on wax, so I can't take that back. Yeah. Give me some headlines. Let's do it. You ready? Yeah, yeah. I got some good stuff for you today, man. So, first headline. Early man was earlier than we thought by half a million years. 35 years later, studies show a silver lining to Chernobyl. Oh, wow. LGBTQ American wrote that. <laughs> LGBTQ <laughs> activists not excited by Caitlyn Jenner's campaign for government. Wow. So many, th- so many things. Wow. So I'm sure some American writing an article about how it wasn't that bad that that bomb blew up. But read that first one again for me. That one tempting, G. Early man was earlier than we thought by half a million years. How many scientists can prove other scientists wrong before people will allow us to not agree with whatever the scientists of today have said about the shit going on? How many signs, like, goodness gracious, you a sucker for them three. But damn, I ain't have to ask about that third one because it was like a punch in the face, man. These celebrities running for office, it's, it's something that captivate me every time. I, I, I get swept up in it, man. Tell me about this Caitlyn Jenner story. Who who beefing with KG, man? You be on, be on family. Oh. Um. <laughs> So this is by the Associated Press. Uh, though Caitlyn Jenner is oh AP, yeah the AP. Um, though Caitlyn Jenner is one of the most famous transgender people in America, the announcement of her candidacy for California governor was greeted hostily by one of the state's largest LGBTQ rights groups and by many trans activists around the country. Quote: That's what you meant by be your own people. I was <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> be your own people. Uh, quote, make no mistake, we can't wait to elect a trans governor of California, tweeted the group Equality California, open quote. But Caitlyn Jenner spent years telling the LGBTQ plus community to trust Donald Trump. We saw how that turned out. Now she wants us to trust her. Hard pass. Close quote. God damn. Can I make a comment right quick before you get into your spiel? Is she telling him to stick to sports? (laughs) (laughs) Dribble that ball. Hit me with something, bro. What you got on your mind? The awareness. Like, I'm, I'm looking at you, LGBTQ plus community. I'm looking at you. The awareness of you to say, I don't trust this motherfucker's judgment, even though they do identify with what I identify with. We're not voting for them. Man, I wish other people could do that. 
I wish other people had that type of awareness to say, I don't agree with what you agree with, even though we identify with some things the same, with a big part of our identity, for the, a community to say, yeah, hard pass on, we see what you were about when you didn't have power. You want us to give you power so you can do what with it? Yeah. Shop shop. <laughs> those, those are my thoughts about it. When I saw that headline, I was like, wow. Because I couldn't imagine. Well, it did happen. Black people saying, man, I ain't open no Barack Obama. I didn't see it in a whole lot of pockets, except for people who identify with a different, yeah, whatever. For yeah. we are not a monolith. <laughs> we are not a monolith. Uh, Shouts out to KMP. Like people, people vote based on the electorate's character. Oh man, what a world it could be if we all voted based on people's character and how they and what they believed in. Like fundamentally, I I don't believe in that. Like that that's a but. Go ahead. I really like our dynamic. I really like our dynamic. Not to talk too much on it, but you really focus on the micro, and a story will always take my mind somewhere else. This show is giving me some headlines. Caitlyn Jenner believes she has a shot at winning governor of California. So when you take all of the specifics off, I see celebrity running for office. Celebrity enters politics. It says one huge thing about American culture. Whether it to be correct or not, people believe it to be a popularity contest. And Donald Trump winning the presidency will definitely make a lot of different celebrities emboldened to run for state office. Why wouldn't she think she had a shot? And if you think that Caitlyn Jenner believes she only represents the transgender community, you're mistaken. Her pride, her bravery, everything that she's committed to trying to advance the issues and different things that they're fighting for right now, it doesn't prohibit her from being an American, a Californian, someone who cares about the economy. I don't think this will deter her, nor do I think it will stain her potential bid for governor so much as it will strengthen everyone else's belief that if the transgender community is not backing her, then they don't have to worry about her being the transgender governor from a policy standpoint, and that being the sole focus of trying to get in the office to shift a lot of things she couldn't do culturally as a celebrity she wants to do in office. You see what I'm saying? Quick. If the community doesn't support, she doesn't have to make a lot of campaign promises that she will then have to make good on. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because she can't count on their voter base. So I'm, I'm, I'm deep into the politics and the thought of it. Like, why does the celebrity think, yeah, this is just a popularity contest. If he won, I'm in that guy. That's what, that's what they thinking. Uh, you seen the wood. She let that nigga hit. And I know I look better than that nigga. It's that mentality, bro. Yeah, 100%. She a white woman also, so nothing's going to deter her <laughs> from anything. Like I've never seen a more confident person than a white woman. Never. Ever. I've never seen a more I'm trying to choose my words carefully because these conversations, these conversations is on ways. Uh, I've never seen a person whose confidence never wavered regardless of the facts of the situation. Mm. 
words chosen carefully enough. See. <laughs> <clears throat> That's a bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So celebrity. You know, you know. Like I, I I've I've watched one, two, three of fifty thousand try and parallel park for a good ten minutes. Never gave up. Like, I had to find some, I had to choose to go ahead and go on about my business. But the confidence, it was there. Regardless of the situation, I chose a micro, take some of the sting out of it. But yeah, she was going to get in that spot, even though she wasn't going to get in that spot. I had a lady cuss me out. You just going to sit there and fucking watch me? I was like, you want me to do it for you? She flipped me off. <laughs> I was like, to be honest with you, I ain't want you to give up and pull out right when I decided to pull off. So I started watching TV. I was watching Skip and Shannon and Undisputed. I kid you not. I was like, damn, she really over there struggling. I was over there at Pope Ball for North Highland. You feel what I'm talking about? That video of that chick trying to pull out of that spot of uh, uh, Parallel Park and that girl, like, her car being behind it, but you don't know that it's her car behind it. And she doing it for like minutes. <laughs> And then Shawty finally get it in that spot and she pull off. And what I thought about when I saw that was she like, man, you even hit my shit, get the body. I'm gonna help you get in so you don't hit my shit. But yeah, I'm good. I'm out of here. We we good. We getting up out of here. It's not good to be behind you. <laughs> it was too full. Everybody saw Shawty as a dick. And you know what I saw? She would have dick it off. She she, she came out and she helped her finish. Like, the girl didn't get in the spot. Like, she came out and helped her get into the spot. And then she got in the car and pulled off. She they was like, why she do it like that? I feel you, but still. The whole point is, I saw it as a physical, like, uh, a gif or a, a minute and a half video manifestation of the metaphor. Give a person a fish, they eat for a day. She could have pulled out of that spot. And yeah, that girl would have been able to pull in easier. But helping her finally get that shit into that spot. Talk that girl how to fish. I disagree. That woman did not learn how to fish. I just, <laughs> she's somewhere right now trying to park that motherfucker. And she's been doing it for <laughs> 36 minutes. And ain't nobody. She she closer. She closer to fishing, at least. No. Because, because she didn't let her give up. She, she didn't let her give up. She know how to bait the hook. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. She know how to, she can bait the hook. Bait. Hey, man. Y'all will find out very quickly as y'all take this ride on, give me some headlines with the crew that P like to get me into trouble because he know what my, my, my crazy, I mean, we started the show off the day with a tweet that got me into a little bit of hot water. You know how you get down. So, uh, I got some headlines lined up for you, man. You got a request for me? Give me some. Give me some. Give me some what, cuz? Give me some hair. Good God, man. This guy, man. <laughs> this guy, you guys. What show are you watching, man? I got some slick for you. In the police killing of this sh- uh this article is by the news uh, the news observer. In police killing of Andrew Brown, a national crisis comes to a small North Carolina town. Louisiana woman arrested for refusing to give back $1.2 million accidentally deposited into her account. Senate passes anti-Asian hate crime bill. I'll run back through them quickly for you again, just so you hear that in succession. In police killing of Andrew Brown, melanated young man, a national crisis comes to a small North Carolina town. Louisiana woman, melanated woman, arrested for refusing to give back $1.2 million accidentally deposited in her account. Senate bill passes anti-Asian hate crime bill.
I don't want to talk about that young man losing his life. Rest in power. Um, so it's really, <laughs> I know what I would do in that young lady's case. So I get that headline. <laughs> like, who would they write mine? With? You got to come fight me for that. <laughs> Fight me, F I N D me. Hey, you talking about I'd have been L Roy from next Friday. As soon as I got my check, I, I was gone. <laughs> um, Fuck you, talking about. <laughs> let's talk about the good old Senate, man. Uh, a lot of good, good, close personal friends. Yeah, man. I can't tell you no lies. It's hard to read the headline about that young boy getting killed and right behind it. Senate passes anti-Asian hate crime bill. U.S. Senate. Oh, this was written by CBS News. U.S. Senate passes anti-Asian hate crime legislation, advancing it to the House. The bill would make it easier to report and investigate reports of anti-Asian hate crimes related to the pandemic. Nicole Killian reports. And I'll just read you that excerpt because the rest of it goes into the minutia of the bill. And it's called the COVID hate crime bill or something like that. So it's directly linked to the pandemic. And I'm sure months from now, when they really have to address the disparity in, uh, you know what, I'll just say this. It's a reason it has COVID in the title, because a lot of the things involving COVID from the FPUC, all this different compensation, the PPP loans, the business assistance, all of this different stuff that was COVID related was rushed through, prioritized and treated with the same importance of addressing the pandemic, life and death for us as a people issues. It's a reason this anti-Asian hate crime bill has COVID in the title of it. But what are your thoughts, bro? On the one hand, the first and foremost hand, you touched on it in the beginning of the show when we broached the child rearing conversation. Before we got to that part of the conversation, you said any group of oppressed people, I am your ally. So first and foremost, I am an ally to my Asian, the Asian diaspora, brothers and sisters who have been targeted with any hate crime, like whatsoever, as a melanated person who understands who's had it done to them personally and who's seen it happen to the group of people who I identify with, I think it's great that we have legislation that will prevent it from happening um, to another group of people, 100%. I'm not even gonna say a but, it's just, we're waiting. We're waiting. We are waiting as a group of people who are constantly targeted with violence from law enforcement, from other civilians. We're waiting also, still. You know, life is, is kind of funny sometimes. And I start this with a mellow tone to not be cackling like the Joker or something like that, like a real lunatic, bruh. But my headphones died literally as soon as you started talking about that shit. So I just, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm dying through it. Because I feel like you might say some real, just real shit, and we might need to cut that up for promotional purposes. Like, oh, damn, them nigga really be getting into it. But, bro, I, like, I really hope bro ain't saying so too, too fucking crazy. And I'm saying like, yeah, yeah, we on this shit, boy. Because it, it reached a point where you paused. So I met your energy and I was like, 
<laughs> and I thought you wasn't talking. So then when I finally got it back working, I heard what you were saying and I was like, ooh, damn, what I agree to. Yeah. So I'm excited to edit the episode. <laughs> and it's the first uh, episode where the, the fourth wall kind of broke. Yeah, yeah, your boy is doing the edit and I got final cut. So when I say we don't cut shit, we play these bitches like, Bruh. if you see a clip or a transition, it's just that it is us going bout transition, giving you a little bit of show production, man. We saucing it up, man. So, so, so catch me up, man. Give me a brief synopsis, man. Where, where we at in the convo on this anti-Asian hate crime bill? I am 100, 100%. Like, ain't no such thing as 110%. I am in agreement. I am in support. I will remain an ally. I've never left the, yeah, the fight for people who are oppressed and them receiving justice in any form or fashion. Where I left it off is we, the delegation, are waiting. We're waiting. Uh, but I, I heard somebody who who gets a lot of flack for who he is and how he carries himself, but he speak a lot of facts. Um, Dr. Umar, and he talked about this on The Breakfast Club, and I invite, this is a platform where we support our brothers and sisters who are in, uh, who have platforms and who speak to the people. Um, First and foremost. And we want you to consume us because we bring you value. Also go find other outlets that bring you value and bring you honesty, truth, and um, satisfy your curiosity as well. Uh, Most definitely. If it, in anything you consume, you are creating a diet. There's junk food, there's candy, there are vegetables, there's your vegan diet where you only consume things that create health and you don't just ever watch you a big, dumb, stupid action movie. Okay, you could only watch The Curious Case of Benjamin Button if you want to, but I will not miss a Fast and a Furious entry into the series. You hear me, my guy? <laughs> you feel me? So we are not in competition with anybody. We just seek to enter your world and add value to to your com. That what these conversations on wax are. It's to add value and pre- present a perspective that is wildly unique, and we feel like the world deserves to have. But not to be too. parody of Umar, but I think the expedience with which this problem was addressed shows a great deal of ability to address this type of issue. So what we as a community, African-Americans, melanated people in this country from any diaspora around the world unified through our melanated DNA, what we see is the ability to do something about this has not been a problem. There is no stalwart to doing something about the imbalances that we experience. So it is by design that we deal with this. But I just want at some point for this community to stop saying it's just as bad as it was 50 years ago. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result. The notion that we as a community should do what Martin Luther King did drive me crazy because if he is the best of us, I'd be damned if I get what he got. I will not do it the way he did it. And I'm going to just leave it at that. I will never be very vocal about how I go about affecting change because I, I believe wholeheartedly 
that in order for me to be successful in my efforts, I need to just put my hands in the dirt. And people being knowledgeable, <laughs> nah, la, la, la. people being knowledgeable about my actions will only hinder the progress of the effort. So I will accept knowingly on the front end any criticism that ever come my way because I will never telegraph my moves for your benefit. For our benefit. So thank you for all of your criticism. And I promise you, I don't need a thank you at any point. But we as a community see very clearly that it is not a problem of the ability to do something about what's been going on. Right. It has been a conscious decision not to. So for us, it ain't about being against the right thing because there's never a wrong time to do the right thing. So the fact that this became an issue and you did something about it immediately made me proud as an American, knowing that you have the ability to do something about problems the moment they arise. And we as a community have been dealing with this for 400 years. We've been dealing with COVID for a calendar, and we have been dealing with the effects of the oppression of melanated people for 400 years. And we've seen this country write into legislation things that allowed people who had always been free to be enslaved, things that counteract who we are as people. For us to be freed, and then you write into law that we are three-fifths of a person to decrease our economic and motherfucking political strength. We watch you today incarcerate us in mass numbers in rural counties and count us in the population, but strip the felons of the ability to vote so that you give that voting power to Caucasian areas who have small populations. The manipulation of us as a people is systematic and policy based. I don't think anybody even understand the basic notion that if it has to be written into law that you are not property, you are not a person. If they got to put it in ink that you ain't property, you are not a person. We seek in a level of progress and equality that I only think we understand that we should be striving for and what it actually looked like. And the last thing I say on this issue for melanated people as a community that I think we need to realize is that the true nature of compromise is that two people who have desires that are on opposite ends of the spectrum, they meet in the middle. They come to a common ground. Man, I want to be on the water, man. I got to live on the beach. My lady, man, I grew up in the city. I got to be in a big city. I'm not with that beach city. I don't even, I don't even like being outside like that. I got to be somewhat concrete jungle, baby. Fuck is you talking about? The compromise is we get a house with a pool. I don't get what I want. You don't get what you want. We in the suburbs and shit, but we 15 minutes from Atlanta. You feel what I'm saying? That's compromise. Neither one of us get what we want, but we meet in the middle. So if we want equal rights as a people, that's our starting point. And their starting point is we're property. And we meet in the middle. And we keep having progress. If their starting point is you are property and your purpose is profit, why the fuck do you think you ever going to get to equal rights and being a human being through compromise when their starting point is property? Hmm. Not to cut you off. You know the NFL draft, man, is Thursday, right? Yeah, yeah, sports, distractions, Coliseum, Gladiator Games, Olympics, all that good shit. <laughs> right on schedule. Right on schedule. It's right on time. It's right on time. <laughs> right on time. <laughs> NFL. <laughs> <laughs> alcohol, alcohol, drugs, mind altering substances. <laughs> Let's get y'all right. Y'all boys get off this 
Fuck Keep them medicated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but the draft is Thursday. So got a nice little 10 4 football helmet in the bedroom right now. <laughs> That's what I need to make for conspiracy, brother. A 10 4 football helmet. Put put fucking a face mask on that bitch and everything. Get crazy and bite that shit. Arr, cook some bacon on that motherfucker. <laughs> Y'all nigga cheese here. We bacon boys, boy. Uh, that gentleman Jack kicking in, man. I told y'all this, this, this we flight deck. It was brought to you by Gentleman Jack and Empty Sack. When I say it's set, that means when I say I rolled up for the show, I rolled up, cuz. I rolled up, cuz. And then pack it, then. Then when only got one, he down for the count. He down for the count. It's your time. You have been chosen. <laughs> you have been chosen to shoot you. So we got the NFL draft coming up on Thursday, man. Um, oh, I already had one in my lap. He jelly. <laughs> That's funny. <man. laughs> Smoke Same time. Smoke them both. Smoke them both, cuz. Shout out to Big Brother Snoop, man, the Wiz. Uh, Currency, the hot spitter. Uh, all my dogs, man, who in the... Who in the game and uh, who known for uh, letting them fly, uh, which is damn near all of us. But uh... <laughs> the one thing I love about them brothers, as a nigga who been a super fan of both since like 06, 07, shouts out to my dog D Hogan's, Derek Hogan's whole giggity, because he tried to put me on Wiz Khalifa on like either laugh now, fly later, or either burn after rolling. I was like, nah, I'm good. And uh, I pulled up on that nigga bumping Cushion OJ, and I was like, God damn, nigga, what this here? Run that back. He's like, nah, get the fuck out of here, cuz. I was like, what? He's like, nigga, this that Wiz. I was like, this Wiz Khalifa? He's like, yeah, when you can spit me bar, I get you this. Because back in the day, kids, you couldn't just get on Spotify and then listen to some shit you heard. If you if a nigga had some music you listened to, you had to access the music through him or get your ass all the way to somewhere and buy that shit. Like we was in the middle of a mountain, cuz like we went to college in a crazy place. So shouts out to my dog Hogan's for getting me all that with Khalifa. But as a fan of Wiz and Currency, shouts out to Jet Life. That's why we call this shit the flight deck to this day, because it's where we take planes from, kid. Them brothers were never all about marijuana. And it was never all of who they were. So for you to say, shouts out to everybody who be on that shit, which is most of us, over 50% of the country has admitted to smoking weed for the longest. Because people got to understand statistics are a tool and they can be used any way you want to. But when you see that shit where it say 50% of the country smoke weed, understand those statistics, that data has been gathered through survey. So that means when they asked 50% of the people they surveyed, 50% of them checked yes. Some of them could have been lying. Some of them could have been telling the truth. But what that means is 50%, over 50% of people checked yes, which means they admitted to it. And if it's supposed to be an anonymous survey and you know the motherfucker who gave out the surveys because it was at a grocery store. They did people who went into Kroger's in the Southeast over a month and a half. And to represent a population of 400 million, you have to get 300,000 surveys. So they did grocery stores, blah, blah, blah. They get a metropolitan opinion because rural have more conservative values and they wanted something more representative of most other country. Da, da, da. It's all kind of rules to how you have to collect data to be able to represent it scientifically. But the point is they just asked motherfuckers, did y'all do y'all smoke weed? And that means over 50% admitted to it. I promise you there are a bunch of people who did not trust the anonymity of the study and I was like, you stupid as fuck. Just like there's plenty of people who still go to their doctor and be like, a nigga, they give their blood work. Nah, nah, nah. I don't do cocaine. Bro, he know if you do cocaine. <laughs> Whatever you do, be real with your doctor, man. Okay, he gonna tell you what you need to do to stay alive whilst doing cocaine you feel he ain't trying to turn you in because guess what you're not gonna do if you in jail 
come pay that copay and run him motherfucking check up. Tell your doctor the truth. <laughs> Just like lying to your therapist. Nigga, I'm here to keep you alive. What we doing? <laughs> and 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 I know I be ranting and y'all gonna notice these conversations on wax gonna get wild. But the whole point of that is whiz and currency about way more than the bud. Talk to the people, P. I'm finna smoke these two blunts and be right there. Man, so my I'm right back. Shut up, nigga. Now nah, I'm playing. I'm gonna be right back. Oh. Uh, yeah, man, jet life, jet life to be D.I.E., man. Um, I took a break, like uh, an actual uh, sabbatical from the craft, uh, from the activity of uh, letting them fly for some personal reasons. Um, but I hope to get back in the saddle here pretty soon. I mean, I can talk about why. Um, I wanted to read some financial goals, man, and it take up finances. Um, me and uh, my partner in life are working on doing some adult things, man. So I, yeah, I took a little breaky break. And he talking about a woman. I am not his partner in life. Yeah, no, that's yeah, that's a fact. Um, not that there would be anything wrong with that. I just wanted to make that clear. You feel what I'm saying? We working on shit, but not what he talking about. And he ain't being transparent about it. But I think it would be pretty cool if you just word vomited some honesty. These conversations on wax. Talk like you talking to your dog, man. Because the first that. flight deck, the first flight deck where you fire up, imagine people who've been around since right here, how they going to feel when they see you fire up on that flight deck. Yeah. Talk to, talk to the people, dog. No, nah, man. Um, yeah, I took a break because I needed to hit some goals. I wanted, like, I, I'm, I'm going to hit these goals this year financially. Um, like, before the clock strikes 12, December 31st. And so that, <laughs> when it happens, and you'll know <coughs> been over a year at this point. Uh, so March. I think March 12th of 2020 was when I, like, right before we shut down for COVID, I think, like, three days before we shut down for COVID on, like, the 15th or something like that. <laughs> I was my last <clears throat> uh, so you know he was committed. <laughs> yeah. Because if the pandemic didn't make him safer. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm <coughs> committed myself, man. Um, I will, I'll be back. Like the Terminator, I will be back. <laughs> once I hit my goals, it's going to be a celebration. Uh, we're going to do some, yeah, we're going to do some very fun, fun shit, man. Um, I'm looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to the work that I'm putting in, um, the sacrifice and not partake. Let's make a commitment that will break your fast. Somewhere where it's legal and do the show from there. Okay. Even if we got to do the Zoom or record or do something like that instead of doing how we normally do it, do it from our phones. And we'll be sitting right across from each other at a coffee shop in Amsterdam or something. Like do some wild shit. Because of what the parameters are, let's do that shit. Yeah. Uh. But NFL draft, man, with the first pick in the NFL draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You got to do this shit with some fanfare because you know I'm going to chop and edit it up, man. You already know, man, this give me some headlines. We got tons of segments, and the further we get into this, the more formulated this will be. But we about to drop it to something we like to call That's a Bet, man. And we hoopers at the heart, man. We met... Scrape like, like I came to the to to Sawan to visit my big brother, and then random country nigga with these long ass braids run up and tell me to call him Deuce. The next time I come back, I'm like, man, where my dog Deuce at? Like I had talked to this nigga for three minutes, and he was the person I was most excited to see when I came back. 
to visit my big fucking brother. And he just happened to be my big brother roommate somehow. So it was fucking perfect. And uh, they was like, nigga, come by AJ? And I was like, nah, why the fuck would I be looking for that nigga? And they was, I was like, deuce, man, nigga from Alabama, man, country nigga. It's like, you talking about friend? <laughs> man, don't nobody call that nigga deuce? And as you see now, man, this nigga got a thousand nicknames, and y'all ain't heard Deuce once. <laughs> That's what you know. Fresh New Year's College. I let it go. Because I was, it came from high school. That was my number in high school. That's what I went by. I got there, and there was a different dude wearing that number, and he was the guy. And I was like, they was like, you don't want that name. It was, it was, it was another dude. It was another dude. He was cool. Cool guy, really cool guy. No. Thanks, man. But the only reason I harp on that deuce talk is because we gonna do this that's a bet thing throughout the series of the show. And that's the only reason I'm taking some time to set it up for you. And we gonna do this thing we like to call 21. We always gonna score this shit like basketball. It's gonna be an exacto points, which will be three pointers, some Steph Curry's. And then there'll be two pointers, which will be them LBJs. You feel what I'm saying? It's, e it's much easier to get that much more consistent. You probably hit that like a 50% clip, you know what I'm saying? If we actually doing it right. With this our NFL predictions, It'd be, let's say we predict in the playoffs in the NBA and we predict in the series. You will predict the team and the number of games that they win in. If you predict the number of games and the team correctly, that's a three-pointer. You get three points for that series when we start the playoffs. If you only get the team right, but you get the number of games wrong, you'll get two points for that. And we're going to keep score all of season one. And then we're going to have these bets accumulate to a big loss. And we're going to have bets through the show that we're going to pay off. And we're going to cut the clips into the show for you guys. So we're doing the NFL draft exactos. So this one will be the top 10 NFL draft picks. And the three-pointers will be getting the team they go to correctly. P, could you start us off, man? Let's get it, man. Oh, it's three. I'm three. Three. Two. That's a bit. Oh, nigga, I'm gonna, I'm gonna smack your ass in this shit. You got the feel, cuz. Hold on, let me get my pad out. Let me put these joints out real quick, man. Oh, so I'm gonna write, write down. down your notes. You gonna write both down? Yeah, I got it. Bit. Okay, okay. Let me fire back up. All right. With the first pick in the 2021. NFL draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select P pick, Trevor Lawrence. My number one pick might surprise you. Quarterback, Clemson University, University of Clemson. I don't know how I go for them. Um, who cares? Clemson. You went to Clemson, you play quarterback. <laughs> <coughs> What you got? Oh, we going we going tit for tat. I thought we was doing this oh, shit yeah, uh, all the way out. All right, all right. For, oh, I'm, oh, I'm looking at the uh, wrong page. Oh shit, I put it in my phone. I'm tripping. I'm looking all through my notes. Feel time, cuz. What you doing, cuz? Like, yeah, we going tit for tat. I ain't gonna go one, two, three, four, five. Nah, we. I'm gonna say right, one. Then. You gonna say one? This ain't make it, take it, this alternate. You make it, you get a ball to the other cat. Bro, I have no idea where this shit is in my phone, cuz. And that's on God word to Bibby, cuz. Why you keep losing shit in your phone, man? I, I be <laughs> doing so much shit, bro. Go search, go to search, and then search NFL draft picks or something like that. See if that You can search? You can search. Just scroll all the way to the bottom. Like, uh, I just I just searched Trevor Lawrence, nigga. This shit is titled HDJFJ. <laughs> I never found it. I don't even know what fold this in. Number one, Trevor Lawrence, Clemson quarterback to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Bam, 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 bam. Pick number two, you on the clock. The New York football Jets. Second, oh, we're gonna do snake. Snake, you go first. I go second. 
Number two, I got the New York football Jets. I'm sure that's going to piss off Giants fans. <laughs> Taken. BYU. Virgin. Dry quarterback. Zach Wilson. Number two. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> HC <see> Green. <laughs> no sex, no booze. That's right. All right. Uh, number two. That boy cock strong. I'm sure that boy can throw that thing 80 yards. Going to the New York football jet. I also have Zach Wilson quarterback, BYU. Uh, they sent their quarterback to Carolina, so they need one. I think they're going to take that guy. <laughs> I forgot they got him all the way up out of there. They didn't even want that nigga to have to shake hands. <laughs> all right. Third pick, San Francisco. Uh, I won't say the Giants. San Francisco 49ers, you on the clock. Um, They got my guy, Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, at quarterback. <laughs> I believe Kyle Shanahan is a fucking liar. Uh, after the, <laughs> like, still somebody waiting to complete a hit on him for what he did in Atlanta in that Super Bowl. But we ain't even gonna talk about it. They taking a the quarterback, man. They've been playing possum this whole time. They going quarterback, Ohio State University, Justin Fields. <laughs> okay, okay. Number three. Draft pick drafted by the San Francisco 49ers. Mr. The neighbors know my name. Trey Day Lance. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all already know North Dakota State. Never been to North Dakota. And now that he not there, I probably never have to go. <laughs> Shouts out to him. I will go to San Francisco, where he will be, where I will be getting my first exacto to separate me from P3 off in that ass. Number four, Justin Fields, mm. Ohio State quarterback, New England Patriots, in your face. In your face, another exact though that's gonna be in your face. They trading up to get him. They trading up to get him from the Falcons. The Falcons gonna trade out and get more capital, just like people are projecting Trey Lance to sit behind my boy Jimmy Graps because whether he upset or not, raising his own value so that a better team bids higher for him is in his best interest, and the San Francisco 49ers will be a playoff contender. So staying there is better than going to a shit team that need a quarterback. Just like Trey Lance is going to be mentored behind him, as opposed to Justin Fields coming in and playing immediately, I believe he is what they would hope to be a better future version of what Cam Newton is diminishing from. This is why they're keeping Cam there. Mm, Okay. And if they can get him in their system, They can make sure they get his regimen to where he will be durable and he will already be knowledgeable, have a great grasp of the system. And worst case scenario, if Cam is fragile like he has been, maybe it's the black version of Drew Bledsoe, Tom Brady, but with the athletic QB of the future. I respect the logic. They're my prediction. Yeah, They're my prediction. I just don't agree with it. Number four pick. And we had to be specific about what these exactos were because if he go number four to the Falcons, I don't get an exacto, just so y'all clear. You get the two points because he went in that spot. Correct. Uh, nah, just that he went in the top ten. It don't matter where they go. It's team and person. You see what I'm saying? You don't got to get the spot right. Like if, if, if the I, Patriots trade I, up and get them at a different number, I get that shit. Right, right. Okay, okay. It don't have to be at four. <laughs> I only get 10 chances to make a prediction. That's why it's foul. Okay. Because you can predict a different team trade up into the team. And the Patriots not trade up. They just sit and wait. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So it's your turn. Number four. My bad. I ain't mean to take four. too long. 
I believe this is what Atlanta Falcons, you on the clock. I believe they're going to stay at that four spot. I believe there's a trade a few days out of the draft. It's not going to involve – they in cap hell right now. I believe they move Julio Jones. You're a few days out right now, OG. Right. It's going to happen in a couple of days. Watch what I'm telling you. When, when, probably like Wednesday. Atlanta going to make a splash. Julio draft Jones. Draft Wednesday way. tomorrow. Tuesday tomorrow. Oh, I'm wrong. We're Monday. I'm sorry. Yeah, tomorrow, Tuesday. This is my pick. I cut. thought they were Tuesday. Atlanta, Let me shut up. Julio. They move a Julio. They're going to go with their young core. They get younger at the core. They draft him. Florida tight end slash receiver slash bad boy, Kyle Pitts. He going forward to Atlanta. Um, yeah, they in cap hell. They got to move. They got to move that salary. It's going to free up some space. They're going to get capital back for Julio. So that's where they're going to get their capital from. But they're going to take that pick. They're going to take Kyle Pitts right there. They're going to take a fast motherfucker that's a matchup nightmare when they got Calvin Ridley on the edge and they got some other young guns um, that played really well for them last season while Julio was out. Um, So, yeah, Kyle Pitts, number four. Number five pick, Cincinnati Bengals, you on the clock. I think this one is pretty – well, for me, it's pretty obvious. They quarterback got clobbered. He tore his ACL because he got clobbered. They got to go O-line. They are going to go Oregon, left tackle, Penn A. Sewell at that five spot. Man, fuck you, dog. Tell me why. My notes read specifically, Bengals, ill, offensive line, either Rashawn Slater, Northwestern, or Penny Sewell, OT, Oregon. Now I want to go Rashawn Slater just so that could be the one they fucking decided. You feel what I'm saying? Because I'm a gambler. I ain't no punk. But the thing about it, everything from my research say they lean in Rashawn Slater. But everything from my research say best rated player, because, you know, they got niggas like, they got Waddell over the nigga who won the Heisman just as best rated player because on his own team, he had better stats doing them before he went down. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm looking at the structure and I'm doing all my predictions based off a different little COD algorithm. You know what I'm saying? Play with your boy. Fuck it. I ain't going to over talk it, nigga. I'm a gambler because I throw them dice. I clickety clack, bitch. Rashawn Slater, Northwestern, offensive tackle to the Bengals, bitch. We gambling. That's a bit. And it's a snake draft, so it's still on your boy, Snake Diesel. Uh-huh. And because y'all just heard this fool, yo, predict Kyle Pitts to the wrong team. Y'all gonna start calling me exacto day, you know what I'm saying? Y'all gonna start being like, damn, they need to drop these bitches quicker so I can gamble on these picks. What the fuck they doing, you know what I mean? Miami Dolphin, Florida, Kyle Pitts, tight end. That boy ain't leaving the state. My cousin would love that pick. My cousin, I see that boy ain't leaving the state. Shout out to my that dog. boy staying in Florida. Shout out to Jingle the- McCringle Bear. Yeah, and I hope he do the pump celebration that whole career. Him and Gronk gonna be at live battling. You hear me? Him and Gronk gonna be at live battling. Travis Kelsey in the wings, like I got moves like Jack. <laughs> They're going to be battling for the king of Florida. Take that, Fred. You getting nervous about these exactos? No. We hear, we hear similar names, different teams, though. Yeah. Uh, the sixth pick, you got Kyle Pitts going to Miami. Miami's on the clock. They need weapons on the edge. This one was tough. I had three guys, four guys, I'm sorry, that, that I played with in that spot. I don't think... I did have Kyle Pitts. Like if he if he did if he got past um, Atlanta, I did see him going to Miami because I know Cincinnati need O line. Like they they could go receiver, but they be they, that's fucked up if they go receiver. <laughs> but what happened to they what, what happened to Burrow last year? That's fucked up. But um, 
I was thinking about LSU's Jamar Chase here. I was thinking about uh, Waddle here, thinking about Kyle Pitts here, but I'm going Heisman Trophy winner, Alabama, Devontae Smith, number six, going to the Miami Dolphins. Ooh! I think he way, I think he way, he's slim. He is slim. The boy is a talent, and I just don't, man. He light in the ass. Talking about his slim, he light in the ass. He this, ate no cornbread. This Gold mouth thing. was at his lunch table growing up. This is my thing. Man, nigga, light. I predict may happen. I think Miami make a move, potentially, and they go get, they surround Tua with Bama boys. They go get Julio from Atlanta. Give them some capital. Oh. And then they draft Devontae like to be his number two. And then they got, I think, Gusecki's still there and tight end. So I think they they shore up their weapons around mm-hmm. Tua with Julio, Devontae Smith, tight, Gusecki still at tight end, and they mob out. That's what Gusecki. And that boy being from New England would make me think he won a two tight end system, just so you know. But it's snake, so you still got the pick. Yes, sir. We going number seven, Detroit Lions. You on the clock. Who? Detroit Lions. They got the number seven pick. Nah, I know. I'm just being a dick. They going Rashawn Slater. Offensive tackle. Who? Northwest. Okay. Rashawn Slater. I got him going seven. Yeah. To Detroit, we'll we'll see. <laughs> I th- I mean I'm, I'm I'm banking on them making like you on a yeah great tackles man. You just got to go after. Them. I feel like you gotta if you can show up your offensive line. That's just one of the things you got to do. Quarterback, offensive lineman, pass rusher, cornerback, and then you build everything else from there. So I think they need O line. They going. Uh, Rashawn Slater, your pick. You got the NFL draft order on hand? Um, I do. Mm-hmm. And where is Cincinnati drafting? They pick number five. Oh, I already chose them. I'm wilding out. Yeah. It's because I was going back and forth between them choosing Jamar Chase. Cause I remember old dude kind of kind of saying he really wanted Jamar Chase. But I got Jamar Chase from LSU going to the Detroit Lions. Okay. Yeah, I was reading my notes and it confused me a little bit. I had to make sure I wasn't crazy. So yeah. So Jamar Chase either goes to the Bengals. So I'm sure he's going top 10, but I'm I'm picking him to the Lions because because he's a talent and they need weapons and because they shipped out their quarterback I don't believe protecting the guy they have is going to be top priority. He on a very expensive contract, so they gonna make him. They gonna see whether or not he's their guy. You feel they're not so much worried about protecting him because if he get hurt and they suck then they get another high draft pick. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. They need to give him weapons so they can see if this is the guy and investing in draft picks is and protecting him is the way to go once they have to re-up his contract in two years. I think they're getting weapons the next two years. I, I, I don't think they're protecting him long term. Okay. That's my soliloquy on the lines because they make bad decisions. That's why I believe that because they make bad decisions. But so I think they're going Jamar Chase, not because he's a bad player, but because they're going weapons. And then I got the Panthers making a good decision and going with a Bama boy, Patrick Sertan. Yuna, the second boy, shouts out to Bama, roll tie, sight. Nah, I'm bullshit. Nah, I'm dead ass serious. Patrick Sertan, the second. Going to Carolina. We thinking the same thing, Carolina. I got a different pick going there. Oh, shit. Position, same position, different person. J.C. Horn, South Carolina. Going in that eight spot to Carolina. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, man. That was in my notes, you fucking jerk. 
Yeah. What school he went to? He went to South Carolina, South K. The game did. Oh, I don't know why. I assume you was talking about the Panthers when I heard Carolina. I just blocked out the oh, South. Shit. Yeah, he, so he didn't even say he's not leaving the Carolinas. <laughs> he going north. Hey. It blew my mind when I seen that shit where it said their logo is the two states outline. You seen that shit? Yeah. That shit crazy, bro. That's that's branding. Uh, it's snake, though, so it's on you. Yes, sir. With the ninth pick in the 2001 NFL draft, I have the Denver Broncos and John Elway saying... Yeah, Drew Locke ain't that nigga. Give me Trey Lance. <laughs> you got him following the nine? I got, yeah, I got him following the nine. You kiss that Zach, though, goodbye. Because if he don't go to the fucking San Francisco 49ers, somebody trading up to get that fool. Get what? I got the Denver Broncos. Where Von Miller playing? He play linebacker. Where he play, though? Where he play? Them. Mile high. And where did they get him? I don't know where the hell they got the nigga from. <laughs> I think they got him like number four. They have been known to draft linebackers in the top ten is my point. And I'm leaning toward Michael Parsons, Penn State, going to Denver. I think they fortifying the defense as opposed to gambling another first round on a quarterback uh-huh. because I doubt they're going to fire this guy. So he ain't going to practice the insanity behavior of doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result. Why don't he do something he hasn't tried and get him a quarterback in the second, third round developer? So I think they're going linebacker, going sure thing, a surefire talent. So you think you stay with Drew Locke for the next couple of years, um, get him one that's not a big uh, I wouldn't say that. I think he makes sure he – I think he's gambling that he's fortified his team enough to get him uh, Aaron Rodgers on a Peyton Manning type of point in his career. Okay. I think he fort- just fortified a team. Do what he know he good at with the first-round pick instead of wasting it on quarterbacks. Because once he had the whole team solid, he kept gambling on quarterbacks, and then Peyton Manning saved him. You feel what I'm saying? Tim Tebow was the first one he let the coach pick, and he was furious that he let the guy do it, and then he got caught cheating, and he fired him and went back to New England. You see what I'm saying? But, like, he just been gambling on quarterbacks once he's built an amazing team, and I think he's back in the phase of build amazing team, get sure fire talent. And that's exactly what Michael Parsons is. So I think he's going number nine to the DBs, main Denver Broncos. (laughs) <laughs> I'm very big in the sound effects, man. I watched Police Academy and tall lad dude who hit them helicopter noises and shit. That was my dude. Pick still yours. Roger Goodell touchdown to finish the top 10 with another Alabama boy Mac Jones to the Chicago Bears. Because they ain't going to fuck it up again. <laughs> That's simple. And to be honest with you, I wrote down all the quarterbacks and I was like, I'm picking all these niggas in the 10 because I need them eight points. And if I fuck up the exact those, it is what it is. And... I had the Chicago Bears trading up to get them from Dallas because I don't think Dallas is going to choose a quarterback. So I got the Chicago Chicago Bears. I got Jerry Jones getting some draft capital and making some savvy. I can talk a lot over the next month and a half, two months, about how savvy my moves was type of trade. I got that happening in that team. So you got them. I'm sorry, who was that at team? The Bears. I got Chicago trading with Dallas to get Mac Jones at 10. Mac Jones, gotcha. I had to find a way to get all of them quarterbacks in the top 10 because we betting on this shit. Mac Jones going in the top 10. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> he might fuck around, go 
to the 49ers. You feel what I'm saying? But I got Trey Lance going, but I had to get him in the top 10 just in case he go to the Niners. So I get him two points. You see what I'm saying? Because yeah. if Trey Lance fall, he might fall out like the top 10. This strategy. But I tried to make it make sense in my analysis. But you asked it like, who the fuck you got picking that 10? No. <laughs> I probably made it go. Hey, fuck you, dog. 10. Obama boy. Not Mac Jones going to Dallas. Patrick Sertan the second. That defense ass. <laughs> I see you have some. <laughs> Enough said. I see you have some. I gotta make sure they're in my top tens too, huh? <laughs> hey. That nigga said Patrick Sertan. Two oh, that nigga ain't making it out the top, top 10. ten. Don't try to play my position. Two cornerbacks going in the top ten. The four most important positions on the field, quarterback, left tackle, pass rush, don't matter whether it's a linebacker or a yeah. lineman, and then cornerback. Two on, I got, we got quarterback, we got four quarterbacks going in the top 10, one receiver because he just out of this world, two old linemen, another receiver, two cornerbacks, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. I can live with it. So that wraps up uh, That's a Bet. So we'll review those picks right quick. Jacksonville, you on the clock. My dog got Trevor Lawrence going. I got Trevor Lawrence going. Second pick, you got the Jets. He got Zach Wilson going there. I got Zach Wilson going there. Third pick is where we differ. San Francisco 49ers. I got Justin Fields. He got Trey Lance. Wrong. Atlanta, number four. I got Kyle Pitts. My dog got Justin <laughs> Fields. He got New England trading up to take Justin Fields at four. Cincinnati, you on the clock at five. Bet it. Penny Sewell, left tackle, Oregon going there. He got Rashawn Slater, Northwestern going to the Cincinnati Bengals at five. Miami, my dog got Kyle Pitts falling to six. I got Devontae Smith going up from Bama. I got Miami making a move to get Julio Jones. They got two Bama boys on the edge and one up on the center. Um, Detroit at seven. I got Rashawn Slater, offensive lineman, Northwestern going there. He got Jamar Chase, receiver, LSU going. Uh, Carolina, you have an eighth pick. I got J.C. Horn, cornerback, yeah. South Carolina. He got Alabama boy, Patrick Zertan, the second going to Carolina at eight. Denver Broncos. He got your boy Michael Parsons, Penn State linebacker, Phenom. Uh, I got Trey Lance, quarterback, North Dakota State. And 10, my dog got Dallas trading out of that pick to Chicago. Mac Jones going 10. I got Dallas staying in that pick, taking the Bama boy, Patrick Sertan, the second cornerback going at 10. That is a bet. Me and my dog bet a 16-bar verse. Should it be a tie with the two and the three-pointers? Going up, we taking shots. Then we both going to take a shot at this freestyle. Next show, you will hear it here first. Either way, y'all getting blessed. Man. Either way, y'all getting blessed. Yeah, me. Yeah, I already know, bro. That's a bit. Hey, I'm going to need a picture of that so that I have a reason to watch this draft live. Oh, well, I will keep score live. I might even fire your ass up in the DM. <laughs> I'm going to take this picture right here. Hey. That nigga there got toasted. Yeah, man. Give me some headline. We're going to be doing a little bit of different shit, man. I know they're probably the first one outside of when we had gassed up featuring BP. Shouts out to the game squad, Lil Bro. Uh, it did the first time y'all not heard her talk about sports, man. But that shit in our blood, man. So y'all go ahead and dive into a lot of different little shit, man. And take it with a grain of salt, man. These is opinions just like the other ones we described, as you heard in the uh, preview. You did what I'm saying. And uh, if you do gamble with the best, understand uh, no advice has been given in this episode. All opinions expressed in this episode are not representative of 
the people who go by the monitor C O D Decatur Boy Music and P Henry Trotter the Fourth, Mr. Lone P Casino P Life's a Gamble. <laughs> That's a bit. <laughs> But uh, in all seriousness, if you do bet with these picks, nigga, we are not responsible for you making those decisions. Please do not bet more than you have to lose. Treat it like entertainment and you paying for a movie ticket. The more you pay, the more exciting that motherfucking roller coaster is. Do not spend your goddamn rent check at Six Flags. <laughs> Square business, man. Square business. Oh, uh, you said you wanted some headlines, right? I'm about to give you some. Nah, I didn't, but give me some headlines. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. NASA takes emergency action to save dying Mars lander. Secrets of a tree whisperer. They get along, quote, they get along, they listen, they're attuned. Mattress Max says he will bet three to four million on 2021 Kentucky Derby favor. Hmm. Let me hit them again. Let me hit them again real quick. Let me and the people. I think I got the one I, I, I it's one I chose. You, you a sneaky motherfucker, I think. Okay, okay. So I started that clock too. We actually did start a clock, people. You can see that. Oh, uh, I got I got some pulled. I got the article pulled up so I can't see that much. Oh, okay. Uh, NASA takes emergency action to save dying Mars lander. First story. Second story. Secrets of a tree whisperer. Quote, they get along. They listen. They're attuned. Story three. Mattress Mac, Houston, Houston legend. Mattress Mac says he will be he will bet three to four million dollars on 2021 Kentucky Derby favorite. And I'm leaning toward that Mars joint or that tree whisperer, man. And I know it's on me to 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 to, to choose after you give me some headlines, but man. I'm at the fork in the road, man, that it's too dark for me to be looking at the GPS. Which way I need to turn? Cause you done read these two joints. Secrets of a tree whisperer it is. Vet, <laughs> man. Bless me. Bless me. That's the one I really wanted to hear, but that Mars was, man. You might have to email me that joint. That's a bet. That, that, that one spoke to my core. Oh. Um. The story up right here. So this is by the Guardian. Secrets of a tree whisperer. They get along. They listen. They are attuned. Suzanne simmered, revolutionized the way we think about plants and fungi with the discovery of the uh, wood wide web. The ecologist's new book shares the wisdom of a life of listening to the forest. When Suzanne Simmons made her extraordinary discovery that trees could communicate and cooperate through subterranean networks of fungi, the scientific establishment underreacted. Even though her doctoral research was published in the Nature Journal in 1997, a coup for any scientist, the finding that trees are more altruistic than competitive was dismissed by many as if it were the delusion of an anthropomorphic <laughs> Today at 60, she is professor of forest ecology at the University of British Columbia, and her research of more than three decades as a forest detective is recognized worldwide. In her new book, Finding the Mother Tree, a scientific memoir as gripping as any HBO drama series, she wants it to understand that her work has been no brief encounter. 
quote, I want people to know that what I've discovered has been about my what I want people to know that what I've discovered has been about my whole life. Close quote. Her moment has come. Research in the forest ecosystems and micro coryzal networks, the built those built of connections between plants and fungi is now mainstream and there is a hunger for more books related to the subject about the hidden life of fungi extend her thinking about the wood wide web while the heroine of richard powers pulitzer prize winning 2018 novel the overstory is said to have inspired has was said to have been inspired by samar i'm sorry i, I read that terribly but uh no 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 i appreciate you doing your thing but damn you know why that is dope for us yeah so like this person i don't even have words like this person like i gotta find i gotta find i didn't know she existed before today i didn't know she existed before today and so like now she's going to get consulted her image will be immortalized. I'll just say that, if you know right. what I mean. Right. Could you, re- you read a portion of the article uh-huh. that talked about the search for something. Could you read that excerpt for me again? Yeah, let me find it again. You know exactly what I'm talking about, don't you? Uh-huh, I just got to find it. Mother, 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 mother. That's what you're looking for in the crossword puzzle. Today. At 60, she is professor of forest ecology at the University of British Columbia, British Columbia, and her research of more than three decades as a forest detective is recognized worldwide. In her new book, Finding the Mother Tree, a scientific memoir as gripping as any HBO drama series, she wants it understood that her work has been no brief encounter. Quote, I want people to know that what I've discovered has been about my whole life, close quote. And the next part of that is her moment has come. Based on a true story. You heard me? It, no, this shit based on a true story now. And people don't even know what we talk about, but it's based on a true story. Like the way we go, her and Annie Dillard, oh man, we finna, bruh. <laughs> you remember me talking to you in depth about me and one of my big brothers connecting over the series that J.K. Rowling created? Yeah. One of the things that were that was most special about taking that journey is the architect had a view for what the exalted ceiling was going to look like when she laid the foundation. She wrote, she wrote the end of the story when she wrote the beginning. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. On some Disney shit, think about the connected universes of the two things we talked about. <laughs> One that will be bleeped out in this. You see it, you get it. <laughs> You drew the hey, you connected them dots. We fit right. up, bruh. Right. Bruh. You connected them dots. <laughs> hey. Speckers. Y'all better speckers. I don't yeah. know what y'all been doing, but y'all, y'all finna the speckers, y'all, bruh. Y'all finna speck us. Y'all finna oh, speck everything. Us. Y'all finna speck us. Put some speck on the name. Hey, you tell me. The importance of the thing that I'm assigning you, that first, that first writing project. How that has to do with, man, y'all better spec us. (laughs) Point blank period, (laughs) cuz. We in this motherfucker, man. And on that note, man, this has been season one, episode five of Give Me Some Headlines. (laughs) Crap! It is a blessing. Who knows how many more weeks it'll be before the outro ran. <laughs> <laughs> Probably season nine. <laughs> Not season nine, episode nine. I'm tripping. <laughs> Y'all gotta wait eight years for this shit. <laughs> and we'll just do it backwards. 
This has been episode one of season nine. Give us a headline. Oh man, I just spoke that into existence. Damn. When we do episode one, I'm going to go back and grab this clip. Season nine, man. You ready for season nine, bro? Season nine. I'm ready for it. You dead ass? Hell yeah. You ready to walk the path to get to season nine? Bro, all we we said, all we got to fucking do, like, imagine when we go back and grab all these clips of That's a bet, G. Imagine when we go back and grab all these clips and all of these things that they be like, man, what the fuck is them niggas talking about? And we go <laughs> out them pieces. And because this shit weekly, bro, everything is going to have, it's going to be Hansel and Gretel with this shit. Give me some headlines, going to be crazy. Like, when they do our biopic, if they ever do, this is how the narrator shit going to be done. Do you realize that? That's what this shit essentially becoming. Especially with us reflecting on our youth and shit like that. This shit is going to become how they do the biopic. We're going to be our own Howard Stern in that shit. Like, Imagine the the Prince sketch when the spoof is so fucking outlandish because they have the recipe for success on wax to reference. Like maybe I burn the sh- good God forbid, but I burn the shit out of myself. So they mix it and they have a light skinned motherfucker catch fire. They mix it with like a Mac Jack. Now I'm doing SNL job for them. I'm going to make sure I don't burn myself on none of the recipe for successes. <laughs> but you feel what I'm saying? Like that shit could be really cool. We going to fuck around and be the narrators to our own story, bro. As we have always been. We telling ourselves what we told ourselves. Now we live in it. And then we're going to tell ourselves what we told ourselves. Like, the more we do this, the more, like, that was a conversation on wax, bro. I broke the seal and just ran back and forth, just like I would if we was on the phone. Muted it when I was peeing. You know what I'm saying? Square being like that was a good ass episode. What you think? Yeah, that was. I'm like, we keep, we keep getting better this shit, man. Like I'm. You never saw the clock, and look at where we ended. When I say we good at this shit, Fred. I did the same thing I would if you text me an idea. When you told me how you wanted the show laid out, I talked to you about where it fit into how we had segments and shit, but you laid this show out perfectly. You had a new job coming up where they kept postponing your start date. You were in the process of putting the bid in and successfully acquiring a new fucking fertile soil to plant everything you building from. You took a situation where the home you in where you felt great about and went through a period where you dealt with a lot of different crazy things and literally started new positions, got back into being an educator and doing different things where you thought that would be the soil when it actually was, but it just wasn't, it was potted. You hear me? Now you about to go take that thing and put that shit in the ground. You feel what I'm saying? And you planned this episode, the best one to date, without ever looking at this clock. When I tried to show it to you, you was doing something else. And the timing still hit perfectly. This is what the fuck you are capable of. In every aspect of what I just described and what I talked about, 
when you went and did the initial interviews for this position you just acquired, whatever thoughts of doubt you walked away with in this moment of victory, know everything I be talking to you about and claiming that shit in the moment you experience it so that you can walk with the presence of that power through every part of that process. You won when you stepped foot in that motherfucking building. Hey, bitch, I was rolling on the third coast, blowing jerk smoke. Shit, we do a lot of things that mama don't know. Want the answers to the questions, want the glue to make it stick. Can you maintain persevering if it all don't come quick? If it take all of 12 years, that's just what it is. I lost a few connections, then connected with some blessings. Come on. Let them niggas walk a thing trying to get down. Okay. They can buy a ticket okay. when they come into okay. their town. Okay. And you can keep your bitch, I ain't trying to bust down. Keep I found my confidence and gave myself the trust. Now nah. I was conscious of mistakes, but still, still made them. Ain't never, never made them, still hate them. City cook them up, and I played them. We created the bill, and some other niggas paid it. Uh-huh. I acquired a skill, but been a motherfucking maven. Hey. We just let it grow. Hey. Ain't motherfucking shaving. Hey. You spending your hey. opinion, you hey. should motherfucking hey. save it. I hope it ain't your last one. Marvel versus Capcom, Parker versus Black Rum, Red Rum, get a beaten dead one. Independence past time lapse, a couple miles high, tires on the edge. You fearing death when we found flight Powder sugar in the sky Topless women riding by Silence in the dead of night Visions of this kind of fight If they put the shit is full uh. See the target yelling pull uh. Watch it float and shoot it down uh. Time to squeeze the trigger now Woo. Made the trip to show my love Found that it's conditional Might not say it but I give a fuck My presence is medicinal Been mixing up As ingredients in the pot I'm striding around third Bitches home run try You nigga rocking and roll Rock, Rocking and really Hopping in my league Touching the silly, it got me smoking this flippy, it got me rolling this sticky, got me chasing these bitches. You know that y'all by the riches, you know I stack a little paper. Now you know I be blowing it. Gas money, pistol, don't have to tell them I show up, don't have to tell them I choke a bit. Nigga, for playing with paper, it come back straighter, they buried under the cater. See, I was raised by wolves, a nigga, keep them a pack. Flying, take too much energy, keep it a stack. Got Fietti with the levees, flood the streets when I be cooking. Fresh and fucking got the strap, cause I know you nigga be looking, but I'm Walking with God, that jail what I name the scraper. Raised by an assassin, might introduce you to your maker. I'm, I'm a savage. savage. Randy, macho man with the candy, coming Come over the top, top rope. rope. Elbow soap from whipping dope. Hit Wyoming and lay low, just cooking. Working on my strokes, something Sounds like, like a, a legend. They be cracking out this guy. You niggas is asking why, and ain't no telling when I'm high. Come, Come along for the ride. ride. Cowards die a thousand times. How many lives you think you got? Got that butter when it's hot. hot. Then I whip it till it thicken. My dope like, like I, I love, love my, my women. women. I'ma go out in a blaze of glory. So it's precious little time to tell my story. Watch the fraternity time. shows on more. Hot tide, 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 hot tide.